good morning, good afternoon, and good good evening to everyone. Welcome to join uh, tonight's uh, webinar. And uh, this webinar is organized, co-organized uh, uh, by the IEEE GISS Shanghai chapter and the uh, student chapter uh, from Fudan University. And uh, uh, we uh, have about one hour webinar and uh, we are very uh, happy to have for, uh, Professor Han Wenyu with us. And, uh, he will present a, a very interesting talk on the topic of advanced uh, face unwrapping techniques in interferometric SAR. Uh, so first I will uh, introduce briefly about uh, Professor Han Wenyu. And uh, he received a PhD uh, from Shigen University and uh, uh, he was a postdoc fellow uh, in the uh, University of Houston, Texas. And uh, he right now is a full professor at the School of Resource and Environment in the uh, Un University of Electronic Science and Technology of China, uh, which is in Chengdu, uh, China. And uh, he is also an adjunct professor uh, at the PhD school in information and communication technology and engineering in the University of Napoli, Pensanova, uh, in Italy. Uh, he has uh, published uh, more than uh, 40 uh, research articles. And uh, he uh, is also the uh, was the recipient of the best review of actually PIGAS, uh, and uh, he currently serves as a topical AE of the PIGAS and uh, AE of the actually geoscience and remote sensing magazine. Uh, okay, so uh, Professor Yu, uh, the floor is yours. Okay, let me share the uh, my screen here. So, so is uh, everything is good on your side? Good, looks good. Okay, so okay, time to start. Oh, hello everyone. I'm Han Wen, and uh, I'm from University of Electronic Science and Technology of China. So today my presentation is about advanced face unwrapping techniques in INSAR. So my presentation includes four parts. To begin with, I would like to introduce some face unwrapping background knowledge. Then I will introduce two advanced face unwrapping techniques. They are TSPA, multi based on face unwrapping, and the deep learning based face unwrapping. For the last part, I will give you the conclusion for today's presentation. So let's go to the first part. Okay, so this is the real world and the INSAR can remotely observe this real world, that's the interferogram. So the interferogram is wrapped phase. We know the wrapped phase is from negative pi to pi. So the interferogram is fringe by fringe. So actually the line between the red fringe and the, and the blue fringe contains the desired information. But if we want to use that information, we need to transfer the wrapped face to the absolute face. So we need a technique called the face unwrapping. So we know the absolute face is equal to the wrapped, wrapped face plus two K pi. And in this equation, only information we know is wrapped face. So for the face unwrapping is one equation, two unknowns. But when you got the absolute face, AKA PU result, you can use this pure result to generate the digital elevation model, or you can use the pure result to do the deformation estimation. So for example, we can use INSAR to estimate the water level change on the balance. Or since INSAR can do the deformation estimation, so we can use INSAR to do some research on the disaster signs. But as I said, for the face unwrapping is one equation, 
two unknowns. So the first unwrapping is an EU post problem with infinite solution. So for example, if we consider this in the program as our input, there will be at least two PU results could correspond to this input, result one or result two. But unfortunately, INSA doesn't have enough information to tell us which one is the correct one. So to find the unique solution to phase unwrapping, usually we assume the absolute phase difference between only two neighboring pixels is less than pi, and we call this assumption as a phase continuity assumption. But sometimes phase continuity assumption is invalid. For example, when the when the coherence of the input in program is low, low coherence means the quality of the input in the program is low. Or your input in the program contains some rapid ground deformation or strong topographic change. So if the phase continuity assumption is, is invalid, what will happen? The infogram will contain some residues, and then the phase unwrapping can be considered as a math game for balancing the residue. So what is the residue? So for example, if we consider the left infogram as our input and the right image is the residue distribution of the left infogram. So usually the residue are in the noisy area. For example, if we look at this area, we can consider this area is kind of a pure noisy area. So we can see the density of the residue in this area is high. So after we have the residue, how can we balance the residue? So for balancing residue, it means that we need to build, we need to build up the line here. We call this line branch cut. So we need to build up the branch cut here to connect the residues and to guarantee the summation of the polarity of all the residues is zero. I'm sorry, I think I, have, I forgot the information to introduce here. Residues has two polarities, positive and uh, negative. So for balancing residue is to guarantee the the, the summation of the polarity on each branch cut is zero. For example, for this branch cut, there are two positive residues and two negative residues. So we can, we can see on this branch cut, the summation of the polarity is zero. But as I said, phase unwrapping is a post problem. So the way for balancing residue is not unique. For example, this positive residue could be balanced by this way or could be balanced by this negative residue but inside doesn't know which one is the optimal one. So in this case, branch cut is also called the ghost line here. From computer science viewpoint, correctly balancing residue usually is NP hard. NP hard means unless you try all the possible solution, you cannot know which solution is the optimal. So, to conquer this issue, the scientific question for today is how can we transfer, transfer the face unwrapping from U post to well post? So let's look at the first advanced PU technique we call the TSPA multi baseline face unwrapping. So, as I said, the traditional INSAR theoretically is U post problem. So the INSAR can only process the area which does not contain many steep gradients. So if the study area contain many steep gradients, it will be difficult for the traditional USR. For example, this area, this is the Wenan city in Shanxi province in China. So since the famous Hua mountain in this study area, so you can consider this area as a mountain area. So usually the mountain area contains many steep gradients. So, the question is, if we directly do the face unwrapping on directly do the face unwrapping on this infogram from this study area, it's difficult. But if we change the system parameters and observe this kind of area one more time and then do the face unwrapping together, I mean do the face unwrapping using the infogram one and two together, is this possible? 
give us any chance to get rid of phase of continuity assumption here. So since we, we use more information, right? So the answer is yes, it is possible. So traditionally, one equation, two unknowns here. So the traditional phase of mapping is equals. But if you give me two or more interferograms from the inside geometry, we can build this new equation here. And in this equation, B1 and B2 are two system parameters. We call it a normal baseline. But if you are not familiar with INSAR, you can just consider their system parameters and we know their values. And the phi one and the phi two are the wrapped phase for the interferogram one and two. What we don't know here is, is the K1 and the K2, they are ambiguity numbers for interferogram one and two. Still one equation, two unknowns, but we do have extra information here because we know ambiguous number K1 and K2 are integers. So when we choose suitable B1 and B2, we can perfectly, I mean, we can uniquely solve this equation by Chinese remainder theorem because C are key in this presentation. So we can, so for the traditional multi based on phase wrapping from the inside geometry, we can build this equation here then we choose the suitable B1 and B2. For example, B1 and B2 are co prime. We can use the Chinese remainder theorem to solve this equation. Since we, when we solve this equation, we don't need any assumption here. So theoretically, right now, phase and wrapping is well posed. But the issue is if we simply consider K2 as dependent variable and the K1 as independent variable, and just tra simply transfer this equation as this form and uh, plus a measurement bias here. If you want to correctly solve K1 and the K2, then the maximum tolerance of this measurement bias is from negative 0 0.5 to positive 0 0.5. It's not a big number. So in other words, the noise robustness of the traditional mountain based on face and wrapping is weak, or I should say, is too poor to be used in practice. So, how can we overcome this issue? We propose a two state programming approach we call the TSPA. So, there are two steps in TSPA algorithm. In step one, we use CRT to estimate the gradient of the ambiguity numbers not directly to estimate the ambiguity numbers. After we have the gradient, we do the integration to get the final PU result. So why TSPA can refine the noise robustness of the traditional multi based on phase and wrapping? So roughly speaking, the multi based on phase and, uh, the traditional multi based on phase and wrapping use the CRT to do the phase and wrapping pixel by pixel independently by this equation. So it means that the traditional multi based on phase and wrapping only use the information from one pixel. But here, since the TSPA need to do the to do the integration here, so it means that the TSPA will use the information from the whole in the first round. So TSPA use more information. That is the reason why the noise robustness of TSPA is much better than the traditional multi based on phase and wrapping. So since the TSPA can refine the noise robustness of the traditional mount based on phase and wrapping, and also can help the traditional INSAR to get rid of the phase continuity assumption here. So right now, TSPA is an exciting and growing technique in INSAR. There are several interesting scientific questions around this technique. So first one, as I said, the TSPA can refine the noise robustness. And then the second one is in the CRT equation, there are two system parameters, normal baseline lines. So we have to answer what kind of baseline combination is the best for the TSPA. So to answer this question, we propose an optimal baseline design strategy for the TSPA. And then the following scientific question is, since the TSPA needs multiple inferograms as the input, so, it means that the input, the data volume of the TSPA is much larger than the traditional phase and wrapping algorithm. 
the traditional phase on ramping only do the phase on ramping on one interferogram, but the TSP you need to process multiple. So the, the data volume of the TSP is larger. So how can we address the large scale issue? So to solve this scientific equation, uh, scientific question here, we propose uh, divided and conquered strategy in this paper. And the, the scientific question number four, is, since the CRT equation is built for the DEM generation, so can we still use the TSPA to do the deformation estimation? So the answer is yes, we can use the CRT equation to do the deformation estimation by using the three pass D in such framework. And the, the last scientific question is, we know there are two interferograms will be considered as input for the TSPA. So can we, can we loan them from different INSA sensors? For example, one from Sentinel-1 and another one from Alos-1. So, I mean, if when, when two interferograms are from different INSA sensors, if under that condition, the TSPA still works, the answer is yes, yeah, they, they come from different INSA sensors. So actually, this is the, the curve about the, the total number of the multi baseline publications from the Web of Science. And the, from the trend of this curve, we can see the TSPA multi baseline phase unwrapping right now is an exciting and growing technique. So uh, now I will use one experiment to show the TSPA performance here. Previously, I prefer to use the Huan Mountain example to show the potential of the TSPA. Uh, the, the infogram of the Huan Mountain I have shown you in the previous slide. Uh, but for today, I would like to use a new example. I choose the Yosemite. So why I choose Yosemite? Because the Yosemite contains many Yuchis. With, so what is Yuchi? The original meaning of the Rochi is a woman haircut style, something like this. But actually the glacier movement can, can also give us some hues with the similar shapes. So we, we use the Rochi to name that kind of hue as well. So if we look at the, the Rochis, for example, in this picture, so the edge of the Rochi is the strong topographic change, like the edge of the human building. So usually this kind of, kind of thing cannot satisfy the phase continuum assumption. It means that Zhu Qi will be difficult for the traditional INSAR technique. So for example, this is Alice One the program uh, generated on the Yosemite Valley here. And the, in the, and the area in the red box are the area between two Zhu Qis. As I said, the edge of the Yuchi cannot satisfy the phase continuum assumption. So it means that this area will be difficult for traditional insert to correctly process. So for example, this is the SRTM DM in this study area. We know the SRTM DM is generated by the traditional insert. So we can see many areas DM are missing here. So it means the Juchi is difficult for the traditional insult. But if we look at the TSPA, for example, if we consider, still consider this wrapped face as, as, as the input, and this is the absolute face reference, which is generated by the LIDAR DM. And this is the pure result from the minimal cost of flow algorithm. Minimal cost of flow algorithm and the one of the most representative traditional face unwrapping techniques. So if we use the pure result from MCF minus the reference, we will got this pure error map. So we can observe two things here. The first one, the pure error in the area between two Yuchis is the highest. And another thing is the pure error spread to the whole lower left part here. But if we look at the pure result from TSPA and you, this pure result minus the absolute, I mean, minus the reference, we will got this pure error map. So first to begin with, many areas between two, two roaches obtain their correct absolute face. And another thing is TSPA 
per prevents the pew error spreading. So this experiment showed the potential of the PS of PSP on getting rid of the phase continuity assumption. So right now I'm cooperating with the Beijing Smart Earth Digital Company to implement the, the TSP based inside processing software. So I believe in 2022, it will be finished. So the that time, if you guys are interested, you may go to download and try the TSP based inside uh, uh, TSPA based inside processing software. Okay, let's look at the second advanced PU technique here because the deep learning based the phase array. So let's look at the motivation first. So as I said, in the traditional phase unwrapping processing chain, there is an assumption we call the phase continuity assumption. We call it the assumption because it's from the human experience. But right now we know AI is better at accumulating the experience. So maybe deep learning network, I mean the DL network can give us a better thing to instead of the phase continuity assumption. And another motivation in the game of the goal is NPR. And the, but Alpha Go can easily beat the world champion. And the, roughly speaking, we can also consider the face unwrapping as NPR. So maybe the DL network can help us to give us a better solution on the NPR problem in face unwrapping domain. So that's are the two motivations here. So for today's presentation, I will introduce two types of the deep learning based PU methods. The first one is called n to n method, or you also can call it one step DL based PU method. So this kind of method usually consider the DL network as a magic box and the provide the infogram as an input and try to directly get the output from the DL network. And the, for the second one, the non n to n DR based PU method. So this kind of method usually not directly got the PU result from the DL network, but this kind of method try to use the DL network to replace the specific steps in the traditional phase and writing processing chain. So let's look at the, the first one, the n to n DL based PU method. So as I said, so this kind of method usually consider the DCNN as a black box. So they use the insert image, I mean the infogram as the input and they try to directly go to the unwrapped face and in the output. So if this works, unfortunately it doesn't. The reason is this kind of strategy cannot guarantee the fringe congruency. So what is the fringe congruency here? So for example, after you got your unwrapped Face, I mean, got your pure result. You can rewrap your pure result, right? And then we've got a new fringe. Usually, a skillful pure algorithm prefer to keep the congruency between the infogram and your rewrapped new fringes. So, why the fringe congruency is that important? Let's look at this experiment. So, if we consider figure A as our input, and this is the reference unwrapped face about the figure A, and this is the pure result obtained by the traditional one-step DCNN method. And this is the rewrapped fringe. I mean, figure D is the rewrapped fringe of the figure B, and the figure E is the rewrapped fringe of the figure C. So if we compare figure D and E here, we know the fringe congruency is not ensured in this experiment. So if we compare the frame, for example, if we compare the frame trend here, you can see the fringe is changed. So under this condition, if we use the figure B to minus figure C, we will got this pure error map. So we can see the pure error spread to the whole lower part. So the re reason why for the skillful pure algorithm try to guarantee the frame congruency is because it can, per it can prevent the pure error spread. So how can we let the traditional one-step DLP method to have the fringe congruency? How can we do that? So we use the GAN DL network. In other words, we add a discriminator to help the, the one-step DLP method. So 
the discriminator will judge if your pure output can guarantee the fringe congruency or not. If not, the discriminator will deny this output. So for example, if we consider this wrapped face as our input, and this is the reference pure result, and this is the pure result from the MCF algorithm again, MCF is one of the most representative uh, face unwrapping algorithms, and this is the pure error of the MCF. Uh, I'm sorry, it, it is not very clear, but uh, I can tell you the M MSE of this pure error is over 50 here. And then this is the pure result obtained by the traditional one step pure pure method. And this is the pure error of the one step pure method. The MSE is only 19 here. If you only compare the MSE of these two algorithms, we can tell the MSE of the traditional one step pure algorithm is much better. But if, if you look at this pure result, you may observe this pure result contain almost, almost no use for geoscience information here. This pure result is really weird. It means that only consider to minimize the MSE is not sufficient enough to give you a useful pure result. We have to consider the fringe congruency. So if we add a discriminator to help the traditional one step PR based pure method, this is the pure result from pure GAN. And, the, and this is the pure error of the pure GAN. So we can see the MSE is only 1.9 here. So it means that discriminator helps. Okay, let's look at the, the first technique in the non-end-to-end PR based pure uh, method. So as I said, in the traditional phase unwrapping processing chain, usually we use the phase continuity assumption. So usually the algorithmic method to use this assumption to estimate the phase gradient. Uh, so, so we want to use the DR network to do the similar thing. So we design a DR network we call the PGNet. So the input of the PGNet is, a, is the infogram and there will be two outputs for the PGNet. The reason why there are two outputs is because the input is a 2D image. So the output, since the output is a gradient, there will be two directions for the output gradient, the vertical and the horizontal. And uh, let me show the performance of the, of the PGNet. So for example, if we consider this infogram as our input, and it, this is the residue distribution obtained by the phase continuity assumption. So for the, for the residue, if you are not familiar with the inside, you can move, uh, simply consider the more the number of the residue is, the worse the pure performance will be. So the more, the worse. And, the, and the, this is the number of the residue. I mean, this is the residue distribution obtained by the PGNet. So compare these two images, we can tell the number of the residues obtained by the PGNet is much less than that from the phase continuity assumption. So if we do the statistics, the number of the residue from the PGNet usually is only 40% of that from the phase continuity assumption. So actually after the PGNet published, there are several research, several follow the research papers. So at least the two of them here, if you are interested, you can go to read these papers. So, Let's look at another non to dl based pure technique. So after we have the residue, the following step for the phase unwrapping is to balance the residue. So for balancing the residue, we design a BC net network here. So the input of the BC net is the residue image and the output of the BC net is the branch card image. So let's consider this simple simulated infogram here. So if you want to correctly do the face unwrapping on this infogram, you need your branch cut is something like this. So you may argue that this infogram is really simple and it's noise free. So why you want the PCNet to try this, this simulated infogram? But I can tell you if you can correctly got the branch cut like this way from this infogram, it means that you can perfectly solve the 
minimal standard tree problem, which is the famous NP-hard problem. So even there, so even this simulated infogram is simple, but the, the crack branch cut of this infogram is not that straightforward. Actually, it's difficult. And this is the branch cut result obtained by the EC net. Uh, it's not perfect match, but I think we can tell the machine knows what we want she to do, she to learn, right? What we so so this is the pure result obtained by this branch cut, and uh, we can see only some few errors are in the edge of the branch cut. So most many most areas uh, obtained the correct uh, the pure result. So you may also argue that if we can really face this kind of NP hard fringes in the real world, so the answer uh, the answer is yes. So if you compare this this real infogram with the previous simulated infogram, you can tell they share the similar fringe pattern. Right? And uh, this real infogram are uh, from the uh, loss two pulsar on the Amazon Valley. So the fringes reflect the water level change here. And uh, this is the infogram from Cosmos. And these five fringes are the five famous skyscraper at the Lu Jiazui Street in Shanghai city. So we do can face the NP hard fringes in the real world. So we need the DR network to help, help us to better solve NP hard problem. Okay, let's, uh, let me show you one experiment to compare the traditional face unwrapping technique and the learning based face unwrapping technique. So traditionally the face unwrapping usually is the face continuous assumption plus the algorithmic model, for example, minimal cost flow model. But they, right now we can use the PG net to replace the face continuous assumption. We can use the BC net to instead of the algorithmic model. So if we consider this noisy wrap face at our input, and this is the res residue distribution obtained by the face continuity assumption, and this is the resi residue distribution obtained from the pitch net. So if we compare these two images, we can tell the number of the residues from the pitch net is much less than that from the face continuity assumption. And this is the branch cut pixel distribution from the traditional branch cut pure method the traditional branch cut pure method, I mean, the BC method is another one of the most representative uh, traditional face unwrapping algorithms. So you can roughly consider the number of the, I mean, the more the number of the branch cut pixels is, the more the isolated island will be in your final pure result. For example, if I look at the pure result from the BC method, you can see there are many isolated island here. The isolated island means the face unwrapping result in this area is missing. So there are many isolated island here the, with the color green. But if we look at the branch cut pixel distribution obtained from the BC net, we can see the number of the branch cut pixels is much less than that from the BC method. So the area of the isolated islands in the BC net pure result is also much less than that in the uh, BC method uh, result. So if we want to look at more experiments to compare the traditional phase unwrapping technique to the learning based phase unwrapping technique, you may go to read our review paper, which published on SVGRSN. So since the learning based pure technique currently is a hot research topic here, so the SVGRSN uses its journal cover to highlight our review paper. So, okay, the final part of the conclusion for today. So as a new post problem, so if you implement your traditional 2D pure algorithm on any deterministic tooling machine, we can generate an ensemble case to your, to your implemented pure algorithm in polynomial time. In polynomial time means it's not that difficult actually is easy. So under this condition, making use of more information to transform your pure problem from new post to well post usually is better than to try any fancy math strategy. For example, for today, TSPA needs multiple 
infograms and the input. So TSPA need, needs extra information. And for the learning based, based pure technique, since you need to, to build up your training data set to train your network, right? So you also need, I mean, the learning based, uh, learning based pure technique also need extra information. So, so the, since the TSPA and the learning based pure technique, they use extra information for, so they can got the better pure result. So if you want to know more knowledge about face unwrapping, you may go to read our review paper here. So thanks for having me today. That's all for today. Great, thank you, Hannah. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, uh, Professor Yu, for this very insightful and uh, comprehensive talk about uh, uh, his work, a series of work on the face unwrapping. Uh, in particular for multi-baseline uh, insight and uh, also how to uh, take advantage of deep learning techniques. Uh, so we, I think we have uh, plenty of time for uh, discussion, for questions and the comments. So uh, anyone in the audience, uh, if you have any question and comments, you can just uh, unmute. You, you can unmute or you can, if you are not able to speak, you can type, type in the chat box and I will repeat the question. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Ming Hu has, uh, has two questions. Uh, maybe Professor Li Jin. Hello, can yeah. you hear me? Hello. Yeah, uh, thanks. Thanks very much for this very nice presentation. Okay, I have, you. this is very impressive. And uh, I, I myself, I'm working on with optical images. So I'm not very familiar with uh, um, our inside data. Uh, I have a question, maybe it's not very, very, I have a simple question to ask you uh, uh, to, to learn. I would like to consult, uh, consult with you. So the question is, you have two parameters, one is K and one is the face, right? There are two parameters in the, in the formulation. One is the, the K, mm -hmm. the, well, the other one is the face, mm -hmm. five, right? If I, yes. Uh, if I understand correctly. So my question is, do you need to recover these two parameters from pixel to pixel, or you just need to recover it for the whole thing? Do we, do we? Uh, uh, for the model based on the face unwrapping trick, traditionally they do the face unwrapping pixel by pixel. So that is the reason why the performance, I mean, the noise robustness is worse. But uh, for the TSPA, we use the, uh, the whole information from the, I mean, we use the information from the whole program. So all the pixels join to join us and to do the face unwrapping. So we use more information, actually much more information. So the performance of PSPA will be better. Okay, so <clears throat> thank you very much. So that means it is also possible to learn, uh, to get this estimation of this parameter for the whole thing, the whole image using yes, the same parameter, yes, yes. or, but it's more more uh, precise or more appropriate to to use this, to adapt it from pixel to pixel, right? Yes, yes, I think you're right. Uh, that's very nice, very nice to work, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Lee. Uh, so I see, uh, I see two, uh, two audiences has uh, uh, put a question in the chat box. First one is, uh, okay, so the PA is two questions. First uh, is for TSPA, how many inter programs do you need to have a good, have a good performance? The length of the baseline may also affect which kind of multi-baseline inter-programs can TSPA handle? Do you need the inter-programs with short baseline? Do you have a PU 
try in an urban area using PSD. So this is the first part of the question. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Let me... Yeah. Okay, right. let me answer the first part because there are many questions here. So, so I try to answer them one by one. So question number one, how many interferograms do I need to, then I can have the good performance. So there are two things beside how many interferograms I need to use. The first one is the, how strong the topographic fix change in your study area which reflects how many infograms I have to use. It means that if your study area, for example, your study area has very strong uh, deformation or you, you, have the, you have a very strong topographic change, then you need more infograms. So another question uh, is, so what kind of baseline infogram can PSP handle? So, for our OPT strategy, I mean, the, the, the optimal baseline uh, design strategy here, uh, roughly speaking, the PSPA prefer the short baseline combined with the long baseline. So we want the long and short combined together. So, so I think this answer also can, can reflect to the, the question number four, do you need infograms with short baseline? Yes. We need that. So actually, we need the ratio. Be, I mean, the, we need the ratio between the between the long baseline divided by the short baseline. Is it the larger the better? So if the short baseline is more is smaller, so it will give us the better performance. So another one. Do you have try the urban area? Yes, we try. We try the Lando City. We try the Houston. So I think the reason why you ask me this question because of the human building right, the house. Because the edge of the building, we can consider the similar to the Rochi. So usually the edge of the building cannot satisfy this continuum assumption. So we'll be we'll got some we'll give some difficulty quotes to INSA, right? So the answer is yes, the PHA can handle the the urban area as long as the resolution of your star image is high enough. So second part. Uh -huh. Maybe go ahead. Okay, so for the DLPU, is the deep learning PU sensitive to the coherence? Uh, the sensitive to the coherence. Uh, so actually for this question, uh, the first one, usually the one-step PU, uh, one-step DR based PU cannot contain, consider, cannot consider coherence very well. So that actually that is the weakness of the uh, one step DR based PU. So, since they use the totally different uh, processing framework, so it cannot consider you the coherence as a weight to the traditional one step DR based PU. And uh, if, you, if you consider to use the PGNet plus the BCNet, so if this is sensitive to the coherence, so the roughly speaking is usually it, when the when the quality of your input infogram is poor, uh, is poor, the DRPU algorithm can give you the unexpected good result. But if your your quality, I mean, the quality of your infogram is is good, sometimes the DR based PU algorithm cannot successfully beat the traditional algorithmic PU PU algorithm. So. It means that if your situ situation is tough, the DR based PU algorithm sometimes can give you some magic results. And uh, okay, the, the next question is it looks that the DR PU is able to deal with the very low. Yes, you are right. It's especially the one step DR based, uh, DR based PU method. Do you apply any face filtering in your process? No, we want to give extra difficult for the experiment, no phase filtering, no. So, uh, but uh, one more thing you need to careful, uh, is, you need to be careful is uh, you need to use the very good training data side to train your DR network. That is important for the DR based few algorithm. So, 
So for the one step DR based PU algorithm, the gen uh, generalization issue so far is kind of the serious issue. But for the PGNet or the BCNet, uh, it's not that serious. So the um, I think if you let me to choose which one is the is the best one, is the better one. In my heart, I think I choose, I suggest the PGNet plus BCNet to you. Okay. Uh I just remind uh, maybe you want to keep the answer sh short because there looks like too many questions. Uh, <laughs> the audience very interested about your talk. So next one from Ren Yexian. So his question is uh, for complex urban area at least uh, how many inside images are needed to complete the 3D reconstruction? Okay, so the similar question, the answer is it's based on the how strong your topograph, topographic changes contained uh -huh. in your program. It means that how tall you are building in your urban area. So if, so, in, your, if in your urban area, there are so many skyscrapers, you need more. But if mm -hmm. just some uh, low height house, uh, low, I mean the regular houses, yeah, uh, in your urban area, so maybe three or four infograms, uh, infograms are sufficient oh, yeah. enough to plot the program. Minimum is three or four, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes okay. two is okay. So. Uh. Okay. Next one comes from Brian. So he have, he asked, have you compared the performance of different such sensors using DLPU given that the air bander Sensors, uh, uh, example, uh, arrows two are coherent uh, compared to C band uh, satellite centennial one. Uh, so you mean try the same over the same algorithm on the uh -huh. same study area uh, with the different inside sensors, or maybe not the same study area. So a general comparison. Okay. Oh, okay, so so in our publications, we try the L band sensor LOS one, but not LOS two. So LOS one on the Himalaya mountain area to test the glacier movement uh, uh, effect on the face unwrapping. And the, for the C band, I don't think we uh, we try the Sentinel one, but uh, the result is not published. But uh, uh, in our publication, we also tried the X band result. Uh, based on the DR, uh, D, DRP method. So we try the tender max and also Terrace X. <laughs> okay, so next one from Kai Wang. The question was, inside data could be used for detection the tree height during growth. So the question is whether inside can detect the tree height. Uh, uh, the answer is yes. The the poor uh, Paul Insa P O L Insa can use the R O V G model to estimate the the tree height. But the uh, so far the traditional Insa cannot do that. I think, as far as I know, based on my best knowledge. Next one from Sylvia. Did you evaluate the errors in using online tools commonly used to make unread? Such as uh, uh, Snap HU or Snap. Yeah. yeah, the good question. Actually, we, we compare many representative representative of remake uh, face and writing algorithms in our public uh, publication. So Snap, 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 Puma, MCF, Branch Cut, and the, the L2, uh, L Infinity. Actually, many other. Um, algorithms are tested in our publication. Uh, but uh, since I don't have enough time for today's presentation, so I only show two of them, the branch count method and the minimum cost, cost flow method. Okay, so next one from Wolf. Uh, so there's two part of the question. First part is, are multi-baseline inter programs helpful in learning based methods? Mm. Very interesting question. The answer is yes. Actually, we just uh, got a publication to use the DR network uh, to do the uh, multi-based on face-on-writing called the CE-Net. So if you are interested, you can download our 
uh, the latest paper, uh, I think is uh, accepted in November by the TGRS. Okay, so it's online, available? Yeah, I think it's online now, CA night, CA night. Uh -huh. So second part, in TSPU, it seems that uh, it's necessary to have multiple programs with different baseline that being identical to your phenomena. Is it true that it uh, is not easy to be used in the study of time-related issues such as information monitoring? Uh, yeah, it's another very good question. So, so actually, we don't need to exact, uh, exactly re-observe the study area. Even your study area can contain some slight Deformation. So, I mean, if your time temporal resolution is high enough, the TSP also can be used to do the time related uh, analysis. So, uh, you don't need to guarantee your deformation is a constant. Your, your deformation can continuously happen, but, but uh, the only thing is your time, time resolution is high enough. I mean, for, for the program on the time, time point one, and the infogram on the time point two, there, the, the deformation contained by these two infograms are not that uh, are not that different. I mean, they can different, but it cannot that different. So, so they can have the slight different. It will it will be okay for the TSP. Okay, uh, next one from Rafa. Uh, do you think we can have better results if we combine a traditional PU and your AI method? Yes, the answer is yes. Uh, actually, I have, uh, actually there are several, I think there are two publications. They use the, the uh, they, they, they call the, the weak supervised the, the AI based uh, PU technique. So they use the, the traditional PU algorithm to generate uh, some results and uh, use the weak learner strategy to learn the several different, uh, the traditional algorithmic PU methods. They learn a pattern, then combine this pattern to generate uh, AI to do the face analysis. So the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. uh. Next one from Finn. Uh, how many training data sets do you recommend or did you use? For the LPU, how many training data sets? Uh, so first, uh, uh, first of all, uh, usually for the the for the data volume of the, your training data set, usually it's the larger the better. Uh, so I, I don't think right now I can give you a specific answer. So how large or how many programs to train the DR network can give you the best performance. So it also depends on how many parameters in your DR network. Uh, if your DR network is really deep, I mean, many parameters contained in your DR network, you need more. Uh, but uh, currently we are working on, on to, gen uh, to generate a benchmark, I mean, the training data set benchmark for the, all the DR-based PU algorithm. So the paper and the data set are still writing. So if you are interested, maybe in the near future, you can download our benchmark. Uh, so, Maybe you can just try our training data set, work or not, and please give me the feedback. Good. Uh, I think it's the last one uh, in the chat box from Nai. Uh, first uh, question is how, how TSPA is different than 3D PU? Okay, actually the TSPA can do the same thing, the 3D PU does, but the 3D PU also limited by the face continuity assumption, but the TSP doesn't need to obey this assumption. So the 3D PU also is you pose the problem, but the TSP not. So you can consider TSP is at once the 3D PU technique. So the question number two. Uh -huh. well, but number two, why do you with PS or DS, there might be some area where there is no PS or DS. In this case, the connection between points breaks, showing an unwrapping error during processing. 
using the TSP eight can resolve this issue. That is another good question. So I think I answer your question because in some area the density of the PS point is not high enough. So it means that the PS point one and PS point two, the distance between, between these PS points are long, very long, right? So it means that the phase difference, I mean the gradient on these two points cannot guarantee that it's less than pi. I mean the phase continuous assumption cannot be satisfied. So under this condition, TSP does help. So right now, one my PhD student, uh, one of my PhD students, uh, he is doing the sparse TSP technique. So sparse TSP technique can do the PS point of phase unwrapping. So under I, I think uh, he will publish uh, this technique on the uh, next year, August first. So. If this audience interested, maybe can look at our the near future Agas paper. Cool. Uh, I see that one additional question from Wu. Uh, so about how do you get enough data sets for learning with a valid adventure? How how, how do you get, get enough training data with uh, valid adventures? Uh, yeah. The first thing is. Uh, uh, so there is isn't a, there is no a common way to get to get the learning data set so far because the learning based PU technique right now, I think is in the beginning uh, stage right now. So I think there is no common way to get the the data to train your network. So but from but uh, for my side, I mean personally speaking, the first thing is. I, I cooperate with some inside data set company, as I said, the Beijing Data, Digital Smart uh, Remote Sensing Company. So I cooperate with, with them. So because they sell the JAXA data, so they can share the data to me to feed my DR network. And another thing is maybe you can use the simulated data if you have a good geoscience model on your specific problem. For, for example, uh, if you want to use the DR based PU network to do the phase unwrapping on the earthquake, and you also have the good earthquake model, and then you can simulate the absolute phase. And then you can use the absolute phase to rewrap the, I mean, you can rewrap your absolute phase and about the infra simulated infogram, then you got the data to train your net DR network. So that mm, strategy may also help. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Hanwen, for the very detailed answers. Uh, maybe if anyone from the audience has a question, we can do one more. Uh, you can unmute yourself in case they place you some question. Uh, otherwise, we are approaching the end of the webinar. It's uh, about 8 o'clock. And uh, uh, we are very grateful for Professor Yu uh, for the very interesting talk and this very long and detailed <laughs> answering question. Uh, okay, so this is uh, the last uh, question from Wolf again, and it's again. Okay. Yeah. yeah up to generation of simulated data sets and then branches. <laughs> yeah, actually, personal speaking, I, I, I kind of don't want to answer this question because the answer is yes. And our current research is try to use the GAN DR network to auto generate the simulated data set for to for automatic generated the training data set for NADL based PU technique? The answer is yes, but the work is not published right now. Okay, so uh, how maybe you mm -hmm. want to you have some paper you want to sh share with the audience? You can also type in the chat box. The so right page. now, uh, yes. uh, actually. Uh, any people you not uh, mention in your talk? Uh, I think all the use for all the published paper um, 
are all mentioned in the okay. talk. So yeah. if you are really want to find the find more information, you can go to read our review paper on the DR based pure, uh, okay. pure technique. <laughs> yeah, maybe you want to type your email in the chat box. Okay. So that, uh, yeah, if anyone yeah, sure, sure. So they can send an email. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, if anyone have more extra okay. questions or comments, you're very welcome. So, yeah, it's uh, about time to uh, close this uh, session. And uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, everyone, for coming, uh, for joining us. And uh, thank you, yeah. Professor Yu, for the thank very you. interesting talk. Okay. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye bye.